One of the ways to help ensure that the right things are done to ensure high quality software is to follow a life cycle methodology. This is because a life cycle methodology provides consistency across business areas participating in projects, defines the deliverables at different stages of each project across the organization, allows for uniform and repeatable verification and validation of project progress. Life cycle methodology also prevents short-circuiting of the development process and promotes well-built systems. It need not, in fact should not, be detailed and rigorous in its implementation, meaning in how the deliverables are created. The level of rigor and detail arrived at should fit the organization, not the other way around. And every organization is different, so what degree of life cycle methodology rigor will and should vary from organization to organization? The reality is often that there is very little rigor, but sometimes there is also too much. If there is a life cycle methodology in place, it might be homegrown, or it could be a purchased package. This used to be quite common among large organizations, but is perhaps less so today. What matters is whether or not the IT organization is successful at implementing quality software systems with consistency. Whether or not this is the case can be fairly rigorously determined via capability maturity audit based on the capability maturity model developed by the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon. There are five levels to the model, ranging from ad hoc or chaotic, where projects that succeed do so due to the heroic efforts of individuals, to repeatable, where there is a bit of process discipline, defined where there are documented processes that on occasion get improved. The next stage is managed, where there are measures to determine the effectiveness of processes. And finally, optimizing, where the processes are well-defined and quality measures are used to continually improve upon the existing regimen. Needless to say, there are substantially more IT organizations at level one, or less in some cases, than there are at level five. Whether commercial package or homegrown, methodologies define the activities that are to be performed. The user and management sign-off procedures processes for model review and validation, code review and validation, sample task lists, and what the deliverables of the system development life cycle should be. Most system development life cycles look something like this. They begin with strategic planning, which is defining what is important to the organization something that might be more difficult than you would think. It continues with high-level modeling of the business functions and business information of the organization. The life cycle continues with requirements definition, user interviews and surveys, which can be accomplished using JAD, which is Joint Application Design, like techniques. Functional design is the next stage where there is creation of a system specification or requirements model and implementation model via structured systems analysis, which is the primary object of this course. The next stage is technical design, creation of a system design model via structured systems design that will be covered in the course after this. And implementation, coding the system, which is the reason we bother with all of this. 
The next step is acceptance test generation. It's preparation of the means for determining if the system does what it's supposed to do. Quality assurance is the next step, determining if, in fact, the implemented system does what it is supposed to do. There needs to be also manual and user interface procedures that are put together, making sure everyone knows what to do with the implemented system. It's interesting how many systems fall down here. It's built. It should do what it is supposed to do, but it's not used properly and ends up not meeting the business needs. Following that is oftentimes a database conversion, loading up the information needed to use the system, and then the system is installed, and we're ready, set, and we're going to go with that system. The last step is project assessment, finding out what can be done better next time around. This last item is, unfortunately, frequently left out. Harping back to the reality of the capability maturity model level of most IT shops.